Okay. That's cool. You guys are talking. It's a conversation. Boom. Welcome to Ability Fierce special at home edition. I gotta tell you what happened. I was in the studio waiting for Carrie. I didn't think he'd come because he wasn't answering my emails. I thought I upset him because I did upset him the other day. And then as I was ready to leave, getting ready to leave, he shows up because he never got my email saying, that's the only time they don't have it. Could you come earlier? But that's why we're doing it in my house instead of uh, at the studio in Brick and we don't get that glorious Ability Fierce background thing. <laughs> is an artist. Uh, I met him the other night at an 80s show and I had kind of a like, wait, is that Jean-Michel Basquiat? Jean-Michel Basquiat is dead. Remember that. But, dead. but Harry said he had a real, uh, not necessarily a problem. Sometimes it helped in his favor, right? It did help in my favor to have this, this similar look or yeah. favor. I'm yeah. Saying. He doesn't have the cash, but he also didn't overdose on heroin. But <laughs> as we were talking, he said, that he had a disability. And I was like, well, then you have to be on my show. So could you tell us a little bit about your situation, about your disability and some of the stuff um, that it's brought you to? And stuff sure. Like uh, I suffered an accident while at work. And um, it was a lower back injury that um, damaged my L4, L5 at the time. Um, and I was paralyzed for three days. Absolutely totally paralyzed? From the waist down. Um, like anyone else, that's quite a shock to experience when you wake up in the morning and you don't have any legs. Um, that, that was probably about the scariest moment in my life. But um, three days later, I just kept saying to myself, not like this, not like this, not like this. Um, you know, I cursed the sky. I did lots of things um, that you would do, wondering why me and all that I stuff. Feeling, so yeah. I... Um, I got up, and I, and, I, and I was a little lopsided, crooked, off to the left, which most of my problems are on the left side of my body, um, but I was off to the left. Mm -hmm. So the next girlfriend at the time took me to a chiropractor, the only person she knew. He said he might be able to help. Um, we did not do an MRI at this particular point, so we're going in blindly to a chiropractor, which I would not recommend to anyone. Yeah. Do the MRIs first, do all the tests first before you have anyone touch you. Because as a result of him manipulating my spine, it made it a point where, um, excuse me, um, inoperable is what it is. So um, just to speed things up to this point is that I went through all the physical therapies. I still do therapy when needed. Um, aqua therapy is the best uh, treatment I have because gravity is really my enemy at this point. Um, but just four years ago, I fell um, without my assistive device. I didn't have it one evening and I was over a cousin's house and I took a tumble. I was trying to go to the bathroom. I, I don't know what it was, but I was unconscious mm. uh, in his home mm -hmm. and the dog happened to find me. I don't know how many hours, we don't know how long I was unconscious, um, but, but the dog woke me up and he asked me what happened. I didn't so um, some time had passed, maybe even a year or two, mm -hmm. but I had this stiffness in my neck. Um, then that became these crunching sounds, mm -hmm. and noises inside my head. And I'm thinking, you know, what's going on? Every movement, there's a crunch, there's a snap and pop. So I went to my neurologist mm -hmm. um, and uh, he asked me, did I take a fall? Mm -hmm. And I said, well, maybe a year ago, so I fell down, but he said, let me see. And he did little movements of my neck, and he heard the crunches from the outside now. Mm. So they're getting pretty loud. So it became, you know, auditory for him. Mm -hmm. So he just looked at me and he said, You need emergency MRI right now. And we went for the emergency MRI. Um, that report came back. And the next time you go back in the office, of course, he's looking at me with this. A look of sadness, but a doctor has to have good fight face. Mm. You know, they can't really reveal, right, right. You know what's really going on. They have to give you hope. They have to provide you with some kind of spirit, so they don't. It's like a deadpan face, you know. So I'm just looking at him, going, "Okay, what? What did they find? What has happened because of this damage? Neuropathy." Mm -hmm. 
neuropathy, if I could explain it in layman's terms or any kind of way, it's, it's your electrical system. Mm -hmm. At some point in time, it calms down and it turns off. Mm -hmm. And that you're able to rest and sleep and, you know, basically be at peace. Mm -hmm. In my case, it never turns off. Mm -hmm. So I'm always on. There's always a constant hum going, mm -hmm. like an ohm. Mm -hmm. Constantly going. And now, when pain gets increased, the ohms get higher. But you hear it? I thought it's audio. almost as if you hear it, but it's, it's the like pain ohm. levels increase when they ask it's you. It's a frequency. It's a frequency yeah. that keeps rising, and it gets to a point where you're almost dialed into every single thing mm -hmm. around you. Mm -hmm. What you hear, what you see, you're you, you're just dialed into it, and mm -hmm. you can't turn it off. And that pain sound is now become pain. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. Stimulation through your eyes can become pain, mm -hmm. stress, eye pressure, mm -hmm. things like that, but it's all neurologically related to it. So every day I, I have to assess that. Mm -hmm. I wake up, I get on my feet, it's the real clue. Mm -hmm. That determines what I'm going to do for the day. Mm -hmm. The minute I get up, it's whether you feel strong or weak, mm -hmm. whether you know you go about putting on your clothes, your shoe, all that, you can assess what your day is going to be like. So I have to write my lists down of what I'm going to do for a day. And so you're like, some days you're like, I'm not going to get much done. Right. And what do you do? Just lie in bed? Um, it's lie in bed. Um, again, I have a black ceiling. Mm -hmm. So again, I need that to just calm down, calm down and keep, keep my eyes. It's like a um, falcon. Mm -hmm. They put the blinder on the right. falcon until it's ready to go. Right. That's what I do basically before I leave my home is I have the blinders on. It's, it's dark, very low light, then I can go out and function and take in all everything that most people take for granted. Now, what are the, in day to day, like going to the store, what, how, how does the disability get in the way? Well, I work myself up to driving a vehicle again. Okay. So that was key because. How long were you? Because you live in New Jersey. I live in New Jersey. So right? you need a vehicle. So you need a vehicle. Um, I no longer have a caregiver or a caretaker, so I'm pretty, pretty much on my own. Mm -hmm. So I had to get strong enough to be able to drive the vehicle. Now, going to the store and things like that, before the vehicle, I had to have help. Mm -hmm. My sister was available at the time, and she was the one, the caregiver, to go to the grocery store with me to pick up things, cat litter, for mm -hmm. that matter, because I have a five pound maximum mm -hmm. weight limit okay. before things start to go wrong. So what was the, okay, so, you, so you're like, I'm disabled, I'm not able to work, um, now, how did you, you had to convince the government, like what services were you looking at? You were talking about food stamps, but mm -hmm. like social security, is there any, what, what, what services did you find that might be available? What I found was just two different things. There's SSI, mm -hmm. social security insurance, mm -hmm. and then there's social security disability. Yeah, SSDI, yeah. One of them meaning you never worked right and at some point if you do work that money has to be paid back right that's the ssi right now ssd is when you're considered disabled right and it goes by a percentage mm -hmm. your arm your mm -hmm. finger what what is there's a percentage based on what the disability is and that determines how much you'll receive mm -hmm. it doesn't Based on your income before you worked before no, or no, anything yeah, like yeah, yeah. that at and all. And it's not no. a substantial amount of no, money. It's no, it's not. A, it's just based on your your twenty percent disabled, which is pretty high. It's, mm -hmm. it's the way it's kind of backwards. It's not a hundred percent, although it is. Mm -hmm. But the way they calculate it and monetarize it mm -hmm. makes it you get this much and that's it. And then because I'm under the age of 65, mm -hmm. I'm not receiving a full social security benefit. Mm -hmm. I'm getting at that percentage of what my disability is, which is full and permanent. Mm -hmm. So it's, I sorry, I think it's under a thousand dollars a month. Um, how I live, which is amazing is I live in affordable housing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a HUD program, so I'm able to live based on my income, it all comes straight off the top of what I get from a monthly income. And then I have to figure it out every month mm -hmm. how to survive. Right. So, and you were saying that the place where you were living when you were going there, that the cab driver said, why are you going there? Yeah, it was a public bus driver. When I first right. moved in my neighborhood, mm -hmm. and I wasn't driving at the time, although the car was there. Mm -hmm. 
the bus driver asked me why I was coming to this neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Senior and disabled, 55, disabled enough. Mm -hmm. And retired, 55, retired, disabled. And he asked me why I was there, because I look, I look fine. Mm -hmm. No one knows what's going on inside. I look perfect. And at that time, I didn't have my assistive device, so I, looked, I limped a bit, but mm -hmm. I managed. Mm -hmm. um, he said, why are you here? And I said, because I live here now. And he said, well, this is a place where people come to die. Mm -hmm. Interesting, it's because you're in the, your disability is mostly in, invisible. Mm -hmm. um, was it hard to convince um, the Social Security and other people. Oh, that yeah. You, yeah. You get a one, two, three thing. Mm -hmm. You get denied three times. Mm -hmm. it's, it's official. Three times before now your case is being heard mm -hmm. before a judge. And how long does it take to be denied three times? Years. It's going to take a good four years. Even if you apply for Social Security, you better do it maybe four years before you think you're going to retire or whatever because it takes that long to process. Yeah. All of these documents and everything. But the provenance is you physically face a medical doctor, it's your lawyer, it's the other side, whether it's through work, in, you know, it's the other side's lawyer, and mm -hmm. then the judge can be now in anywhere in the country. You do it by video. Mm. My judge was in Puerto Rico. What? Oh, we, did a, we did a hearing. Yeah. It was amazing, mm -hmm. high tech. So they're like outsourcing they outsour justice. They're stuff? outsourcing justice. To Puerto Rico, yeah. the judge is in Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. and I'm looking at this big screen, and he can see me. There's a camera yeah, like yeah, this, yeah. and the other side was trying to say their argument was in their report that I was dressed very well mm -hmm. when they followed me one day. Mm -hmm. Dressed very well, and I, they said, "Could you stand up, sir?" And they, my lawyer helped me up. I got my cane, so I'm leaning now. The pain's starting to kick in because mm -hmm. we had to go down to Cherry Hill, New Jersey, for this. I live in Princeton now, do I? Um, I'm down there and I get up and I'm just leaning over because I can't stand straight up and I need something to hold on to. So mm -hmm. I'm leaning over and why they're trying to dismiss my condition, the judge says, wait a minute, I'm reading the report. Mm -hmm. This is a bunch of BS. He said, I'm looking at this gentleman right now and I can obviously tell mm -hmm. he's having a problem. And he's like, case. That's it. He's just letting the gavel down. Mm -hmm. He asked me to all get the way up. from Puerto Rico. He was able to all see. the way from Puerto Rico. People looking at you, saying, "Why you're faking it? You're you're uh, waiting for a check. Mm -hmm. um, you could get a job. There's something you can do. There's always something out there someone can do. Mm -hmm. We always hear that, um, without any introspection of what is really going on with you, because again, people expect to see a disability." Disabled person in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. It has to be visible. You know, two crutches. Yeah, uh, the extreme. You know, some kind of injury. Mm -hmm. You know, like a World War II veteran or something. They want you to look at, like that mm -hmm. before they say, "Oh, wow, you're really messed up." Mm -hmm. Now it makes that person feel better because mm -hmm. they're not that. Mm -hmm. But if you're me, then it becomes a challenge to prove that there's something wrong, and you know. Um, it's happened when I'm in public with people and they've seen the flare-ups come and you know I've had to be carried somewhere or you know my legs don't work anymore or something like that. I prevent that. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be seen like that. Mm -hmm. Just like when it first happened, I was not going to accept being paralyzed from the waist down. Mm -hmm. The same thing when I walk out of the house. I refuse to allow the lack of support. You don't want to look as bad as you feel. Right. Yeah, being in front of someone mm -hmm. and your fate is being decided right there. And when it finally is decided, it's like you're supposed to celebrate. Mm -hmm. And there's absolutely nothing to celebrate whatsoever. I mean, you get your back pay. You get uh, the numbers which you're going to receive for the month, every month. And at that point, again, I was almost moving to where I live now, so I'm still in my sister's house. Mm -hmm. But waiting for that benefit was a nightmare. Mm -hmm. Again, for what was happening around me, now I had become comfortable with what I had to do to keep myself going and stay healthy and all that. I was going to physical therapy, that was helping. I started to love the aquatics. Mm -hmm. So I had my now... Now, was th were these paid for by, by... No. So you had to pay for this out of pocket? None of... This is the thing. Even though I receive benefits, as minimal as they are, mm -hmm. 
Insurance companies don't pay for what really makes me well, what really got me here today. Mm -hmm. It does not pay for the, the aqua therapy, mm -hmm. which I tried to advocate for. Mm -hmm. I, I said, I go to hospital affiliated gyms. You would think the insurance company there would be a tie in mm -hmm. where this preventive care treatment would kick in, where you would actually be doing preventive care, mm -hmm. which is the aquatics and mm -hmm. all that, and it sustained my life, and you know, I have less going, less doctor's appointments, and all this stuff. That's preventive care. Mm -hmm. but they don't pay for it. Mm -hmm. So that's out of pocket. Mm -hmm. um, I'm in the New Jersey Medical Marijuana Program, mm -hmm. which is really gave me 90% of a quality of life back. Mm -hmm. It's enabled me to be, again, here today, mm -hmm. uh, continue to produce artwork, mm -hmm. not like I used to years ago, but I do still, I'm active doing it. I don't show it mm -hmm. because, again, the logistics of that made the disabled person, I can't get it out of storage and get it from where it is to where it needs to go. Mm -hmm. But um, it just changes your life where you have to be so, wearing so many hats. And that's the problem where you get tired. I mean, you don't want to do everything for yourself, but you do want to do everything for yourself. And you get, that's where this battle, you get tired and your, your day either goes well or it doesn't because you're doing so many things to sustain your life mm -hmm. and managing your income and all. And again, you end up 50 cents at the end of the month every year. It's, it's almost, it's down to that, 50 mm -hmm. cents. At the end of the month, I could know I'll have and then I get the next check. And then if something comes up again, I get invited to New York City. Mm -hmm. I've got to work that out. And at this point, I have to get a loan. So I messed up your life by inviting you onto the show. You made my life challenging. Okay. I would say. I'm sorry about that, but I think at some level, I hope it's worth it that we get the story out and we could start to change. I'm tired of people saying, try this, try that. And I'm looking at them able bodied. Mm -hmm. And I'm going, how do you know? Right. And how, if you do know, why don't you help me access yeah. these type of things you're suggesting? Or. If it's a suggestion as far as physical exercise, have you tried yoga? Have you tried this? That costs money. Mm -hmm. I can't walk in a yoga studio and with my backpack, with my mat, and get in there and start working out. They're going to ask me for money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which, again, if I end up with 50 cents at the end of the month, mm -hmm. where's the room for me to increase my physical activity, whereas my wellness now becomes, well, I become better. Mm -hmm. And I know this works because I'm here today. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying, why... Is insurance companies resisting financing or paying for what's needed for patients mm -hmm. when they need it? Yeah. Not but this is six this, months. This is a destructive model. It's the model is deny it, and if they fight for it, we'll probably give it to them. But let's try to make it as hard as possible, and we save money this way. But what's happening is that lives are really being impacted. People are Extremely. really being hurt by this. And nobody's looking at that cost. Extremely. It's the throwaway. I don't want to be a throwaway mm -hmm. individual. Right. And I fight every day to try to be a part of society as much as I can. And my title now is an artist. Mm -hmm. So I have now have faced looking at an entire inventory that's sitting locked away. Mm -hmm. Actually, it seems like my whole life was locked away. And I'm just coming out now trying to... I'm glad you invited me on the show to tell this story because... We're locked away. Well, this is this is the idea of the show, is people aren't seeing these stories, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You know, when they went to Willowbrook and there were all these people in bad condition and the news cameras showed this, people were shocked and they did something, mm -hmm. right? But what, they, I don't think they intended to do this, and I'm not saying it wasn't good to break up Willowbrook, but what I'm saying is there's a lot of private Willowbrooks now. Yeah, There's a lot of people living by themselves with some services or no services, and they're suffering, and it, it, it but it's hard to make a news story about them, mm -hmm. because if you come and you make the news story about one guy, people, well, that's just one guy, right. and maybe he didn't deserve it, maybe, that's the other thing, is like, maybe he had it coming to him, you know, yeah. he's an artist, is that really a job, you know, that kind of, and, and if he can do that, yeah, then you can do other things. Yeah, yeah. Not realizing I'm crawling around on the floor, yeah. you know, rolling on my back, and you know, I'm agonizing over getting some things done that I get it done. Yeah, it's just that I can't have a job that allows me to roll around on the floor. Right, it's hard to find. Yeah. yeah, but I'll give you an example of services being denied or cut back. The fact that we had an on-site service coordinator mm -hmm. in my development. This person was so beneficial to get me back on track with. 
the paperwork and all of these systems that mm -hmm. we have to go through in order to continue my um, housing. All those documents have to be submitted. At the end of the year, and they renegotiate my lease. Medical bills, the whole nine yards, all that has to be calculated in order for my living to be doable. Mm -hmm. But this service coordinator was hired by an outside company. It was called Enable. Mm -hmm. They were very good people, and they were so efficient and helping people straighten out the paperwork. And I always said this, I said, I just have a spine problem. What if I had a mental problem and I had to deal with this paperwork? I said, you know what would happen? Me being on my own, I wouldn't survive. Mm -hmm. Because it only takes one one document, mm -hmm. not submitted, at such and such date, at such and such time, knocks you out for an entire year. Oh yeah, like if you mess up with the SNAP program, you have to start the whole thing again. All over. It's it's just like, and those thick. I mean, it. You know, he's just yeah, thick, I, I, this thick. I, I want to get to the point where can we ascertain that he's disabled? Yes, we can. So it shouldn't be a bureaucratic. Like what I had this summer, which drove me nuts, was I had a guy in helping Nick, but it was through an agency, and I'm changing to a program called Self Direction where we hire the people ourselves, and we wanted to hire the guy from the agency for Self Direction. But he wasn't cleared, even though he was working with Nick and he was cleared through the agency, he had to go through the whole clearance problem with self-direction. Mm -hmm. Then the agency informed me that he could no longer work for me because we were doing self-direction. And self-direction said that I couldn't, he couldn't work for, not me, but for Nick because he wasn't cleared. And I'm like, he's in the house, right. he's working for the kid already, mm -hmm. he's been cleared through one thing that the money is it all comes from right. the same it's Medicaid funneled, funneled down. yeah and but now we're in a bureaucratic and this kills people people mm -hmm. can die from this people can lose their jobs people can lose all sorts of stuff and it's just because well I know he's clear there but he's not clear and he has to take a court a 20 hour online course on how to take it it's like he already knows mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well you know just to make a long story they took that service coordinator away. Mm. Took it away from the whole program. That left me, again, I've gotten myself back on my feet, but there are others that are not quite there yet. Mm -hmm. And they used to be afraid of going in the office and talking to the service coordinator because people have become shut in their houses and their homes. They don't go out and figure it out because now they've lived this life for mm -hmm. so long, trapped in their homes with no one to assist them in anything. Mm -hmm. And someone got the bright idea to cut the service coordinator. Mm -hmm. So it leaves these people back to where square one again yeah, yeah. with how do you get all your paperwork ready for the final year to renew your lease. And again, that can cost you your housing. Right. You know. So it's sort of like, well, we saved a few dollars and we destroyed someone's life. Can we find smart people to do this? Like people who could be flexible, who could see the situation and go, okay, I see this is absurd, let me fix this. Mm -hmm. But no, it's like, no, I can't because I'll lose my job if I don't do it exactly. Yeah. And they don't, they don't, there's no accountability in those offices either. No. Because they're the document, Social Security says, if they make a mistake, you pay. Mm -hmm. So in my and, case- And if they make a mistake, you pay. Yeah, so they made a mistake once and I was had a so-called an overpayment. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. What that did to me was reduce my benefit down. I think at one point I was getting like maybe a hundred dollar, hundred sixty bucks cash benefit, and maybe hundred some odd dollars food benefit. Mm -hmm. Do you know they reduced me to six dollars? Six dollars. Well, at least what you're are getting you that buy? six. Well, you could what get are you going to you can get a, six dollars a happy for the month. meal <laughs> and maybe a loose cigarette to put up your nose. <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna make soup out of my shoes. I, I mean, six dollars, even if it was an oversight, shouldn't that employer eat it? Mm -hmm. They should be paying for their mistakes, right? Not just allowing it to go on where the recipient of the benefit gets even slapped harder and has to do a repayment, and they keep doing these readjustments and readjustments that they've already taken from you, and then you learn how to survive with the $6, and they try to give you a little bit more, but then, oh, but you made a little bit more, so we'll take back a little bit more. Yeah, well, that that's the other thing is like, and we were talking about, is like, the, if you start making some money, then you get your benefits reduced, but you're not making that much money that, you know, that 
Like you might be able to have a go of it if you can make a, have a part-time job and the benefits, mm -hmm. but then that money starts eating up your benefits. And right. you're, so it's almost a disincentive to work unless you're making real money. You know, yeah. like you see plenty of that. I mean, yeah. there's no one. They tell you you can earn up to a thousand above and beyond your benefit. Mm -hmm. After that, a year or a month. I believe it's a month. Okay. So it's not too bad. But that's, that's also but not much money. Still not yeah. much money, but if you go over that, now you're getting less. Mm -hmm. So either way, you're not getting any more. Even if you make more, you're going to be less benefit. Right. So it, it still keeps you in that same state. Mm -hmm. Unless you have a breakthrough or something Unless like that. Unless you're making like $5,000, then, yeah. then, then you're, yeah. If you can't supplement it, mm -hmm. and I'm just wondering what's going to happen with me. I mean, if I sell it, I do pay my taxes, but if I do sell it, it works, and it's not often, but when I do, I report I'm, I'm mm -hmm. an honest taxpayer. Mm -hmm. I pay my sales tax. But if those numbers increase at any point, it's going to put me, I'm always going to be in a catch-22. Yeah. Always. Mm -hmm. You know, and then it's going to come down to, am I self-sufficient for this benefit is no longer necessary, or do I still need my Medicare or Medicare? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's getting real tricky now. Yeah. You know, the, the, the stronger I get in a one way, the, on the other hand, I could lose yeah. support. Yeah. And if you, something happens along the way, you're, you're again... So now I upset you at the gallery, and I don't know if you want to go back there, but I and I was wondering what I said to upset you because I thought I was being pretty cool, but um, everyone has their own triggers. But I think going back, it was what I was talking about is I noticed that some people can't get married because of their social security because they like I, I met an advocate who she was complaining she lived with a man for a dozen years, mm -hmm. but because if they married, he would lose his social security. And then they would be broke together. Right. Yeah. Well, what you touched on was, again, uh, well, support. Mm -hmm. That was the main thing. And I realized when you were talking that when I'm home, not here, mm -hmm. I have some supporters. And again, I have to thank a friend of mine named Dora, who's really been very supportive of me. Peace to Dora. Um, mm -hmm. Taking me to doctor's appointments mm -hmm. when I'm on drug, all this stuff, all the behind the scenes stuff mm -hmm. you know, gets handled by few individuals including uh, our guest here. And they're doing it for free. They're but they're doing it for free. Yeah. They're, they're, they care about me. Right. So they're doing it, you know, uh, while they can because everyone has their own lives. Mm -hmm. But what you touched on was I did finally realize that I'm alone. Mm -hmm. I have to do everything on my own up until the point where I can't. Mm -hmm. And that day could come. And I'm always fearful that every day that I may go back to that crawling on the floor again. Mm -hmm. So that, in that quick second, it just just triggered my reality, mm -hmm. and I realized, you know, not like I gotta run out and grab a girl, knock her in the head, and like drag her into my house and keep her forever. <laughs> but it's it's, it's getting, I mean, there's got to be somebody there. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, I'm getting, I'm not getting stronger, but it's just kind of someone has yeah, to you, pick you, up the you, slack. Yeah, everyone um, wants. Everyone wants to be with somebody, with somebody yeah. but having a disability, again, mine's invisible. I mean, if I had hundreds hanging out my pockets, maybe that might work. <laughs>